This is how to start your cybersecurity career in 2024. According to Cybercrime Magazine, there's going to be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs in 2025, with more than 750,000 of those positions based in the US, which is another reason why there is a huge push and need for cybersecurity talent, and specifically cybersecurity talent with the necessary and relevant skills that companies are looking for and hiring for. So in this video specifically, I'll be covering how to get those skills and foundational knowledge for you to kickstart your cybersecurity career in 2024 using online resources, technical projects, as well as certifications. Thank you to Coursera for sponsoring today's video. So first off, let's learn those foundational cybersecurity concepts that you'll need to get that first entry-level job in cybersecurity. One of the best ways I recommend doing this is by taking the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate on Coursera. This is one of the most popular cybersecurity certificate programs. This is a great place for beginners to start, especially if you don't have any previous technical or cybersecurity experience. It's a beginner level certificate that covers all the foundational concepts of cybersecurity that you'll need to know for the job, including common cybersecurity practices and impact, how to protect networks, devices, people, and data from unauthorized access and cyber attacks, how to identify common risks, threats, and vulnerabilities, as well as the techniques to mitigate them, and then last but not least, getting hands-on using Python, Linux, and SQL. This certificate program really walks you through the basics for entry-level cybersecurity roles, including SOC analysts, security analysts, network engineers, and other entry-level roles in cybersecurity. Based on their report, with 75% of certificate graduates reporting a positive career outcome. As part of the foundations of cybersecurity, what you'll be working on as a security analyst or an SOC analyst is going to have a very far range. As someone who has worked in cybersecurity in the last four years, I've covered everything in my previous roles from vulnerability management, secure software development, cloud security, security audits. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that in the beginning, you're going to want to learn a breadth of knowledge versus a depth of knowledge. So you want to learn as much as you can about a wide range of topics rather than just focusing on one specific area, at least in the beginning. Especially if you don't already know what specialization or niche they want to go into in cybersecurity, which is why this certificate program is a great option to start with because again, you're focusing on breadth versus depth. As part of the certificate program, you'll cover cloud networks, network security, TCP IP, security audits, incident response, the NIST cybersecurity framework, Bash, CLI, as well as SQL, using the command line interface, authentication and cryptography, vulnerability assessments, SIAM tools, learning how to write code in Python, as well as preparing for your cybersecurity job search. And you can start a seven day free trial of the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate using the link in my description below. So once you've learned those foundational concepts, next up is to focus on getting that hands-on experience. I'll also add a video that I recently made on beginner level cybersecurity projects that you can work on to get onto your resume and a little bit more on that later in this video. So there are three main ways I recommend getting technical cybersecurity skills. Number one is to build out some kind of infrastructure. This includes building a home lab or an SOC lab, and there are ways to do this using free tools. And this also happens to be one of the projects that I cover. The second way is to focus on a specific tool. For example, Burp Suite, Wireshark, Metasploit, Snake, Bloodhound, any tool that's relevant for the job that you're going into. If you're new to cybersecurity, then you may not be as familiar with many tools, but I would recommend starting with some popular cybersecurity tools like the ones I've just listed. Typically, many of them also have free editions or community editions that you can use for your personal projects that you don't have to pay a license for. Many of them may also have a student version or a student discount, but this just adds to your personal toolkit as well as, of course, new additions onto your resume and for any future projects or capture the flags or even interviews where you're able to talk about some of the tools that you've had experience using hands-on and it also shows a willingness to learn. And number three is learning coding or scripting skills. This is something that I recommend even if you're not going to be doing coding on a day-to-day -day basis. I think basic coding or scripting skills is going to be relevant for anyone who works in cybersecurity. In fact, in my previous role as a security analyst, part of my interview did have a small coding section, but even though I wasn't coding on a regular basis in my role, it was still part of the requirements that the team was looking for. Plus, it makes it easier for you to talk to developers or look at developers' code which can be a very likely or common scenario while working in a cybersecurity team. So the Google Cybersecurity Professional Cert does cover Python and Bash scripting, so that is already two technical skills under your belt. They also happen to cover SQL, which I personally think is a very unique add onto a cybersecurity program. But if you think about it, a lot of your job as a SOC analyst or a security analyst is going to be digging through logs and writing search queries. So even though you may not be using SQL in your SIEM tool that you're using on the job, 
it's going to be a very similar querying language or querying structure and i found that it really helps knowing sql at least the basics so that you're not completely lost when you start using those tools in an soc this along with the other technical skills that this certificate program covers including how to use wireshark as well as linux are going to be great additions onto your resume as well all right, so now that you have the foundational knowledge for cybersecurity as well as the technical skills, the next thing you want to do is focusing on getting those technical projects onto your resume. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, I have a video on the top five cybersecurity projects that you can do as a beginner. These are going to be great additions onto your resume, and a lot of these tools are very popular. Using popular tools and learning resources, one thing to remember when you're working on technical projects is the fact that you want to focus on what your end product is. For example, some people may think that when a pen tester goes through a pen test, that the execution of the pen test itself is the final result. But that is absolutely not the case. The final result is that piece of paper, that report that the pen tester writes after they can finish conducting the pen test. So while cybersecurity often glamorizes the technical side of things, the documentation is really what's going to be important. This is what you're sharing with stakeholders, with the senior leadership team, with other developers, as well as anyone else who may need a copy. This report is going to explain your thought process, explain the vulnerabilities you found, explain the potential exploits, the risks, thoughts on mitigations and remediations, as well as of course just properly documented breadcrumbs for the development team to recreate the issue that you found so that they can fix it. Even if you did all the work during the pen test, the report is going to be the most important thing that you show people that, hey, you worked on this thing and these are the results that you found. And I really wanna challenge you guys for every project that you work on, write some kind of documentation, write some kind of guide, even just a walkthrough tutorial on what you did, how you worked on it, even publishing that on medium.com or online project portfolio that you can link onto your resume along with listing it under your technical projects on your resume is going to be really helpful in helping recruiters see what work that you've done. Even if you don't have any previous cybersecurity experience working full time, just having those technical projects on your resume that show that you have the capability to be able to pick up the skills, learn new tools as you go, as well as being self-motivated can really set you apart from other candidates. There are plenty of ways to document your projects Again, a website is a great way to do it that you can link on top of your resume and these documentation reports, technical walkthroughs can also be shared with recruiters and hiring managers to be able to show them your work when you start getting to the interview stage. Our right, next up is to focus on getting a cybersecurity news RSS feed. I use a tool called Feedly and it basically consolidates all of your cybersecurity news sources into one place. Obviously it doesn't all have to be cybersecurity, but I personally only use it for cybersecurity content. I do have this linked on my Patreon and it should be public so anyone can use it and download my entire feed if you don't want to go and find the news sources yourself. This is a great way to catch up on cybersecurity news or you can scroll through for 10 to 20 minutes a day in the mornings just to see what the headlines are if there's any news or exploits or threats that may impact your company or your sector or even just the companies that you're interviewing with this is also a great conversation starter if you have an upcoming interview with a company and you're able to talk to the recent cybersecurity news that may impact the company's cybersecurity team i guarantee that the hiring manager or whoever is interviewing you will be impressed but this is just an easy way to keep up with current cybersecurity events without having to go to various different cybersecurity news and blogs and, and outlets and instead you can just go through one consolidated place. I use Feedly but there are other tools out there so you can use so you can use whatever works best for you. All right last but not least is to take advantage of the career resources available to you. If you do decide to enroll in the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate, Coursera does offer career support, which includes things like resume reviews, LinkedIn reviews with personalized feedback, this along with interview prep using interactive tools and mock interviews, and career support with Coursera's job search guide. As part of the certificate program, you'll also be connected to 150 plus employers in Google's employer consortium which will give you a great head start when you start to apply for cybersecurity jobs. On top of this, I really recommend going to career fairs, especially local ones that are in your city, in your community. A lot of times local career fairs will give you a lot better chances of getting noticed by HR instead of applying to jobs online where there may be hundreds or thousands of applicants applying to one specific role. Going to a local career fair, even though it can be sometimes intimidating going in person, it is really going to be important because when you're speaking face to face to an employer or an HR person, it makes it a whole lot easier to make that connection and of course to get their contact email and follow up directly. 
Conferences, of course, are also a great option. If you're a woman in tech, I highly recommend the Grace Hopper Conference, but there are lots of conferences out there that also have career fairs attached to them, whether you're a student or an experienced hire. You should also take advantage of the discounted exam voucher for the CompTIA Security Plus certification that you get after completing the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate. You'll earn a dual credential after completing both the certificate and the CompTIA Security Plus certification, which the certificate program actually also prepares you for. So it really is a win-win, two birds with one stone, if you complete both and add it onto your resume. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. And if you're interested, you can start a seven day free trial of the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate using the link in my description below. I would also love to hear where you guys are in your career, whether you're a student, whether you're currently a college student, a bootcamp student, maybe you're just transitioning into cybersecurity from a whole different field. I would love to hear about your experience getting into cybersecurity. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and if it was, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Let me know if there are any other video topics that you may want to see from me in the future and I will gladly add that to my video list. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye!